It took about 20 minutes for it to cool down enough to where it wouldn't detonate when I'd try to get going. But now I'm in an area with more wind, so <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it won't start up again. That was pretty crazy. It must be really freaking hot out here because I've never had this thing detonate before. But you look at that up there. All the different colors in the rock. There's purple, um, like a green, reddish, pretty dang cool. There's different colors because of the different metals in the rock. When the metals oxidize, they all turn a different color. So each color is from a different metal in there. Oh wow. Now rolling up on Furnace Creek. You see all those trees? That's freaking Furnace Creek. We get some gas, we get some water, and then it's off to Yubi Hebe Crater. Uh, here's Harmony Borax Works. What remains, anyway? Pretty cool. I'm not gonna stop. I'm actually kind of running out of daylight a little bit so so I'm trying to get to the Yubi Hebe crater before I'm out of daylight it has been a long ass day fun but long So this is why they call it Mustard Canyon. It is the color of mustard. The sun is vanishing and I have not reached Yubi Yubi Crater yet. Um, so this is not ideal, but I'll figure something out. Made it to Yubi Hebe Crater. So apparently, a long time ago, there was magma mixing with water under here, which created expansion of the water into steam. And then there was an explosion when the pressure got too high just exploded out this huge crater. Like, imagine how magnificent that explosion must have been to blow out this huge crater. Quite impressive. All right. This is the road to the racetrack. Let's do it. Okay, I did not make it to where I had hoped I would by sunset and the sun is behind the mountains now so it's going to start getting darker and darker so I figured I'd just set down, eat, and then set up camp here. So it did rain 
pretty much the entire time I was getting ready to leave. And then it stopped as soon as I was kind of ready to leave. But I'm off. Off to Racetrack Playa. This thing is seriously in the middle of nowhere. Okay, this is Tea Kettle Junction. Usually there's a bunch of tea kettles hanging on there. But um, every once in a while they clean it off. And this is one of those times there's zero tea kettles on there. There is a water trade thing. You see those in the desert every once in a while where people just make a cache of water in case uh, someone needs it. I have reached the racetrack playa. Here's one rock that has moved. <laughs> you can see the trail from it. But yeah, this is called the racetrack. The rocks that lay on this playa move across the across the ground. And for a long ass time Nobody knew why. I remember in high school watching something on the science channel and they were like, nobody knows why the rocks mysteriously scrape across the surface of this playa. But now they know. Every once in a while this will fill up with water and then it'll get really, really cold and you'll get an ice, a layer of ice. And then the ice will kind of like break apart and start drifting away. The, the chunks of ice will drift away from each other and since the, since the ice is formed around the rocks the big ice slab drifting drags the rock across. Once it dries up it just kinda looks like the rocks were magically drifting on their own but that is actually not the case. And then this big big rock in the middle of this is called the grandstand. Get it? The grandstand at the racetrack. Huh? Huh. And then I just checked my oil. And the oil level is looking just fine. So after all these hundreds of miles of kind of blasting around, it looks good. Which is which is <laughs> really good. I have I have half a liter extra of oil in case I needed to add any. But I'm I'm definitely glad that I don't have to add any. That's good. <laughs> Alright. So off to off to Panamint Springs and the Rainbow Canyon.